Do you find yourself staring at your blank piece of paper not knowing where to start? I'm going to share some useful tips for creating your underpainting or base layer to get you started. I'm Kirsty Rebecca and I create drawing and painting tutorials that are easy to follow so that you can create realistic and professional artwork even if you're just starting out. A lot of my students are confused about where to start with a drawing and it can be stressful looking at your blank outline and wondering how to start your first layer. So something that I like to do is look at my reference photo and choose a color that really stands out to me. So in this case, I saw the blues and the purples on the face area. So I added the color that I saw in that area and then I just chose the next most obvious color to me. And I continue with this until the whole subject is covered with color. I'm working on Claire Fontaine pastel mat as usual. This is my favorite paper to use with pastels and it's honestly worth the price because I haven't found another paper that compares to this one. A lot of papers labeled as pastel paper tend to have a really grainy appearance and don't take as many layers as pastel mat does. So if you want to work with the layering techniques that I use, I definitely recommend this paper. There's a photo in the top right of the screen to show you what my finished artwork looks like in comparison to the base layer or the underpainting that we're doing in this tutorial. I'm also starting with a mid-tone color paper, which makes it easier for me because I can add light colors and dark colors and they will both show up. I love using pan pastels for my base layer because it makes the process much quicker. And if you wanna know more about pan pastels and how they work, I'll leave a link to a tutorial in the description that will be really useful for you. The way that you apply pan pastel is with these soft tools and that's S-O-F-F-T. That's the brand name. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes so you can use them for larger or smaller areas. When you're applying the pastel to your drawing, make sure that you're really not pressing hard at all. I'm almost barely touching the paper with the sponges. And you'll notice that when you first come into your artwork, a lot of the pastel will come off of your tool and then it will stop releasing pigment quite quickly. And this is when you wanna go back into your pan and get more pastel because a lot of people try to press harder with their sponge to make the pastel come off. But if you press hard, especially on this paper or any other kind of sanded papers, it will literally sand away your tool and you'll damage them and go through your tools really quickly. The little cover sponges for the blue knife tools wear away really quickly because of how thin they are. So I tend to try and use the larger sponges for larger areas when I can because they don't wear away as quickly. If you'd like to improve your drawing and painting skills even further, then my Patreon channel is the solution for you. From as little as $4 per month, you will have access to every tutorial that I've previously uploaded on your chosen tier level in a variety of mediums like pastel, colored pencil, charcoal, watercolor, and more. There are tutorials available for a range of subjects like wildlife, birds, landscapes, still life, flowers, and portraits. If you would like to view the entire Patreon tutorial library before joining us, I'll also leave that link in the description for you as well. Not only are my tutorials full length, real time and fully narrated with clear instructions and explanations, but you will also have access to the original reference photo, a traceable outline and a list of suppliers, including the exact color names I'm using. So you really can relax and follow along every step of the way. Every month, I upload brand new tutorials to the Patreon library so you can grow and develop your drawing and painting skills and take your art to the next level. You can also join in on our members chat group where you can ask questions or advice or share your artwork and you can talk to other members in the Patreon community. And the best part is that there are no lock-in contracts, so you can upgrade or downgrade to a different tier level, or you can cancel your pledge at any time if Patreon isn't right for you. So why not give it a go? The link is in the description if you want to check it out. One of the main problems that my students seem to have when first starting out using pastels is that they struggle to be able to layer pastel pencils on top of their base layer. The trick with your base layer is not to add too much pastel. If you lay too much pastel down too soon, you're going to fill up the tooth of the paper really quickly. And if you don't know what the tooth is, 
Basically, every paper has little grooves, kind of like hills and valleys, which we call the tooth. And this helps your pencils or pastels grip onto the surface. So the pastel will catch on top of the hills and then deposit into the valleys. And once your valleys are filled up, it becomes level with the hills and creates kind of a smooth surface where there's nothing for your pastel to grip onto anymore, which means that you've filled up the tooth. So basically you'll need to work in light layers to build up the pastel slowly. In the base layer, you'll probably have lots of paper showing through and that's totally normal. That's actually what you want so that you don't add too much pastel too soon. This will allow you to be able to add the amount of pastel pencil that you need to, to get the texture and the details on top. A good way to check if you've added too much pastel in your base layer is if you can't see your outline anymore. You should be able to see most of your outline still, otherwise you may have added too much pastel. So a lot of artists have different processes with their underpaintings or base layers. Some people like to use colours that are very close to their reference photo, whereas I prefer to add more saturated and brighter colours in my base layer. The reason why I add these vibrant colours is because I find that the colours end up getting dulled down once you've added a few layers of pastel pencil with more natural colours. But these vibrant colours will still show through slightly in your end result. I think it makes the piece look more interesting and it gives it more depth. And I actually tend to over exaggerate my colours in the end result anyway, because I like to add those extra colours like blues and purples, but that's just a personal choice. So whether you like to have really obvious bold colours in the end result or not, I still do recommend adding these colours in your base layer, then using more natural colours throughout the next few layers to dull it down a bit. Sometimes it's hard to know what colours you actually need to add, because looking at the reference photo, you may just see a lot of browns and whites, and there's not really much vibrancy there at all. So something that I like to do is edit my reference photo to make the colours really stand out. I like to hype up the saturation to bring out those colours that are already there, and I use a lot of those colours in the base layer. I also like to create colour swatches of my reference photo to really help me see those hidden colours. So I basically take an eyedropper tool and I pick out a colour from my reference photo, and then create a little swatch on the side. Both of these really help me choose what colours to use when I first started out. But after a bit of practice, you'll be able to automatically choose the colours that you prefer using. Like I said earlier, I tend to add more blues and purples in a lot of my artwork that aren't really in the reference photo. Also, in your base layer, you really want to try and ignore the details as much as you can, and just try to block in the main colours and values. If you add any details in this layer, it's just going to be blended out in the next few layers anyway. If you're struggling to ignore the details, you can actually blur your reference photo so that the details aren't there anymore. So sometimes that can help quite a lot for people. For those smaller areas like the eye and the nose area, I'm not going to add the pan pastel there. I'm just going to save them for the pastel pencils because they are a little bit too small to go in with the pans. So I'm just trying to block in those main colors and values. So you want to get your darks and lights in the right spot but you also don't want to go too dark or too light in your base layer because it will be hard to add those textures and details on top. For example, if you add pure white on the white areas, you're not going to be able to add any white details on top with your pastel pencils later on. And it's the same thing with your shadows. If you go super dark, you're not going to be able to adjust them to make them any darker or alter them in any way. And it's the same with your shadows. So I tend to save my brightest highlights and my darkest shadows for the last few layers. One of the reasons I like using pan pastels in my base layer rather than just using pastel pencils for the entire piece start to finish is because the pans are actually more cost effective. They last a really long time. And if I did this whole layer with pastel pencils, they're going to wear down much quicker, which ends up being a lot more expensive to replace in the long run. Pan pastels are also much quicker than pastel pencils, so as you can imagine, a tiny tip of a pastel pencil is going to take you a very long time to cover this piece in comparison to using the soft tools with the pan pastels. I always come through with a cotton tip or my fingers to blend my base layer, and this helps make the colours a little bit smoother, 
but it also helps to push the pastel into the tooth of the paper, which means that you can add more layers of pastel pencil on top. Pastels can be really confusing when you're first starting out, but this tutorial in the top left corner goes through the whole process of creating a lion using pan pastels and pastel pencils. So click on that and I'll see you over there.